Hey, how you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at Electra Assassin. This is number one in an eight issue limited series. This was by Epic Comics. Epic Comics was an imprint within Marvel Comics that, you know, they went straight to the direct market, a higher price, better paper, and uh, because of that they had more mature themes, they could be a little bit more violent, they could be a little bit more explicit and things like that. Uh, DC followed suit a couple of years later with uh, with the Vertigo imprint. But, but uh, Marvel, for whatever reason, they always kind of had like a little embarrassment and they wanted to make like magazines and stuff like that. So throughout the, uh, the 70s, they experimented with magazines. That kind of died out. And then around the 80s, they took Epic Comics, their, their magazine, and they reduced it, made it Epic Comics. Uh, the epic magazine rather and then they reduced it and they made epic comics and th this is one of them this was a big deal at the time this was frank miller writing and bill sankevich doing the art okay and let, let's open it up now before i keep it the, this cover is just 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 a famous classic cover okay let, let's open it up to check out the credits so like i said we got frank miller for those for those of you who don't know frank miller uh is is a phenomenal living legend uh just just a phenomenal talent writer artist still alive uh he's not doing too good health wise i think he's like 67 or something like that but uh he tried to break into comics and he kept trying and kept trying and kept trying and he kept getting rejected and neil adams took him under his wing gave him some pointers and helped him out and next thing you know he's working for marvel uh he he just you know he, he started a spectacular spider-man where he drew an issue of he drew Daredevil guest starring, and then he just became the Daredevil artist and then writer. Oh my God! And he just became super famous. Then he went to DC, he did the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One, and that was it. He did. He also did the Three Hundred. He did. A, he, he, he. I think he wrote the script to RoboCop Two. And there you go, Bill Sienkiewicz. Bill Sienkiewicz is getting kind of popular right now because Bill Sienkiewicz uh, got famous drawing Moon Knight, and now that there's a Moon Knight marvel tv show coming out uh there's like there's been like a, a renewed interest in, in bill sikovich and we'll we'll check out we'll talk more about his art when we look at the comic uh, archie goodwin i've talked about archie goodwin over and over again he, he's just a phenomenal editor he's also a writer he's also an artist but uh i i know him mostly as as an editor he had an eye for talent he took risks i i i first heard of him in this epic line when i was a kid buying these comics but i've since found out that he uh was doing warren magazines like creepy and eerie and stuff like that so when those went under he came and started working for marvel for for their magazine lines just a just a phenomenal talent and everybody liked him uh daniel Ch chichester the funny thing about him is his name chichester became like a running gag and in, in grew which was which was at epic at this time joe duffy and jim shooter uh two two more editors uh joe duffy uh was a was a Longtime Marvel editor, Jim Shooter. Geez, I, I I talk about him like almost every video. So you know, I'll, I'll refrain from talking about him. I'm kind of getting tired of talking about him. Okay, so this is Electra, created by Frank Miller. So Electra is all Frank Miller. He created her. Um, if you watch the Daredevil show, you know about her. She was Daredevil's girlfriend in college, and the the Netflix show was remarkably uh, close to the comic book. Let's look at the Indicia. August 1986. That's all I really wanted to say. I, I was. It said the date on the cover, right? Yeah, it did. It said it right there. Okay, I thought so. All right, so Electra is an assassin at this point, and just like the hell it back. And this art, I remember hating this as a kid. Oh my god, I I hated it. I I got all I I bought the issues as they came out, and I I think I stopped reading this comic halfway through the first issue, and then. I, I never read it. And that it took me years later to to come back when people started talking about what a classic was. Like, you know, I had a billion comics even back then. And, w and when I put a comic away and I wasn't interested in it, I, it was easy never to see it again. And I I hated it and I never read it again. I've since reread it. I read it as an adult. And uh, still, the the Bill Sienkiewicz, what Bill Sienkiewicz does classic like his Moon Knight run, it is just great, great art. This is more abstract and more experimental. And I I don't know. I, I'm still not a big fan of it. You know, still, I understand, like, it's groundbreaking and it's different, but I'm not a fan of it. So, and, okay, let's let's go back. Let's, I'm not going to read anything 
Can you tell me what's going on? Okay. I'm just going to point things. And, and I'm purposely being vague to make a point. Can you tell what's going on? Absolutely not. The storytelling is awful. And what do I mean by the storytelling? The art conveying what's going on. I find that Bill Sienkiewicz, when he's doing this abstract stuff, and Howard Chaikin, just in general, are the two worst comic book storytellers. Meaning, without the words, you have no freaking clue what's going on. Uh, and I know Bill Sienkiewicz has a super hardcore following. Again, I, I loved him in, in, in on Moon Knight. I absolutely loved him on Moon Knight, and I'm not too crazy about him in, in this. But what's going on is... Electra's in an insane asylum, and she's and she's going over her life, and she, you know, this is her as a baby, you know, and her mother, she's thinking about her her mother was killed, and then it's flashing back to the insane asylum, what's actually going on, you know, they they giving her some shock therapy and and, and whatever, and you know they're throwing her naked into her bed, and his everybody else in the room, it's just like horror. In, in an insane asylum then she's escaping back into her mind and she's thinking about her father and how her father was was later on killed and here she is she's catching a fly she's testing her, her reflexes then then they're all thrown into the shower and this guy's taking perverse pleasure it it, it sprayed them down with water and i don't know why everything's moving around and here she is eating and again you can't tell if you don't read the comic and then she's cut back to her training with the stick so one thing when it has this painted muted colors it's it's real life in the asylum and then when it goes to this like i don't want to say four colors but bright colors pastels i guess it, it's it's her imagination so here she is training with stick throwing shurikens shoot you know just fantastic like superhuman training and this what is she doing she's trying to reassert her her personality over this like this horrors of this so see there that just like throw you know right from the showers into this bed you can see it it's 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 like cold so they're like being tortured okay and it's not an american it's it's a made up latin american country they do that a lot in comics so now she's thinking about a i almost said mark millar but uh matt murdoch is daredevil you know and she's thinking about the happier times in her life and things like that and uh, what is this? Oh, a, a guard tries to uh, feel her up once, while she's sleeping, and she reacts instinctively and just just sticks her hand right in the guy's throat. And of course, other guys are coming to to beat her up. The story's no big deal. Uh, I I don't particularly. I, I'm not too crazy. I'm I, I know I'm in the minority. I'm not too crazy about this comic. And then uh, now it's cut to how did she get into the insane asylum? And she got hired to kill this the the head of this country, and she was paid two dollars to do it because, you know, she has to get paid. It's her code of honor, but she wanted to do it anyway, so she t took two dollars. And then she goes out and and uh, goes to kill this guy, and she meets the beast, and the beast like kind of overpowers her and beats her up, and then like pours like what he calls mother's milk on her, and it like basically makes her hallucinate and trip, like it's like an LSD trip. And then when she comes to, she's in the asylum. Like, I, I, I forget. Like, are they trying to like just mess with her, or are they trying to brainwash her to get her to go to her side? And here, here's the guy she tries trying to kill, and she eventually shoots him with a crossbow while he's at a, a playground. So she she fulfills her contract, and there she is. She's still in the asylum. You know, re, re going and re thinking about everything in her life, and. I don't know. It's just so difficult to follow the story. You really got to read. So here she is, the, you know, the, what are they called? Orderlies that are, are strapping her down and fighting her. You know, so it's cutting back in the time, you know, the beast, the mother's milk. And here she is just like being gassed. And they're like basically torturing her is the only way to describe it. She fights her way free. She takes like scalpels and stuff like that and kills everybody because she's Electra Assassin. And she gets out of the asylum. Um, again, um, the story, the story's fine, but uh, Bill Sienkiewicz's art just makes it. It to me, it's not superior. If this was anything else, I, w I would really, really like. But it, it was experimental. I wasn't too crazy about it when I first got it. I wasn't interested. I, I think I got about halfway through this issue and gave up. But I, I still bought all eight issues because I'm, I'm crazy that way, and I literally didn't read this until about five, six years ago. 
because everybody's like, oh, you never read Electric Assassin? It's it's so great. And I was like, well, you know, I'm an adult now. Let, let me let me try it. Um, it. It was easier to read as, as an adult than it was when I was a kid. But still not still, still not my greatest. It's, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, what, what I like when he's doing more mainstream comic book work. His, I'll, I'll break out a Moon Knight comic because the, the TV show's coming out. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, this was Swords of the Swashbucklers. This was Bill Mantle. I never got this. I don't know why. This looks fabulous. And I love Bill Mantelo. And th this art looks really, really cool. So I, I, I think I'm going to you know, go on back issues bins and, and find some Swords of the Swashbucklers. That looks really cool. But that was another epic line. And here on the back cover is like a little house ed. And this is the Bosk Chronicles. I have this, but I can't for the life of me remember anything about it. So that should tell you something about it. But I have this and I and I read it all. And I know, re recall nothing about it. Elf Quest. I loved Elf Quest. I got the epic run of Elf Quest, and uh, I, I I really really liked it. Then I went and got the Warp Graphic uh, magazines, the original, and then I kind of forgot it after a while. And then and then I went and bought a bunch of uh, the the other series. I really like Elf Quest. This is Wendy and Richard Peeney. Steel Grip Starsky. Uh, I don't even know if I have that or not, but I, I remember when it came out. Electro Assassin, Alien Legion. Alien Legion. I got. I, I. I. I've been buying Alien Legions. I think I have number one to ten. I got to sit down and read them. But I. I didn't get this when it's when this came out, and, you know, the art is wonderful. And and I've since found out that it, it had a, a slew of art of uh, writers that I really really like. And Grew the Wander. I still get Grew the Wander. I. I get. I started collecting Grew the Wander with Epic number one, and then I went back and I got the uh, Pacific and the in the, uh, EC, uh, issues. And I. I still love Grew. Gru is that that chiming is is my Roomba, and I I still love Gru. I I like it a lot. Matter of fact, I just got a issue four of Gru meets Tarzan, so I'll sit down and read that this week. So, this is kind of a, like a a a weird showcase because it's not a, a comic that I particularly enjoy that much, but it's an important comic. And look at this little uh, little uh, tear in it that drives me nuts. But uh, I love Frank Miller. Bill Sienkiewicz, sometimes I love him, sometimes I hate him. He's kind of a jerk on, on the internet, but that's neither here nor there. And But this was an important series. Everybody talked about it. Uh, uh, not my favorite, but uh, it, it's an interesting story. I, I just wish the art was a little bit more uh, superheroic, you know what I mean? Rather than this this bizarre abstract art. When, when, he's, you know, when he see the kingpin, he like takes up all, his head is over here and his body is... It's, I don't know, it wasn't my cup of thing. It was it, it was a difficult read. You know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll read it again. Maybe I'll appreciate it more now. But there you go. This is Electra Assassin by Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz, and it was a Marvel comic in the epic line. All right, thanks a lot. See you tomorrow, and I appreciate that you took time out of your busy day to watch my videos. Thanks. Bye-bye.